Hello students, once again, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will share a very important chapter, microeconomics, average cost. Now, what do you mean by average cost? Suppose a producer produces five units of a good and total cost of producing it is thousand. So average cost will be thousand by five. That is total cost divided by the quantity of output produced. So thousand by five is 200. So 200 will be the average cost. So very simple to find average cost. Now there are three types of average cost. First is average fixed cost. Second is average variable cost. Third is average total cost. In some books, it is also written as average cost. And in some books, it is written as average total cost. Now we come to average fixed cost. We know TFC, that is total fixed cost, is the total fixed cost of the fixed factors of production. So average fixed cost is the per unit cost are the fixed factors of production? AFC is given by TFC by Q. Where TFC is total fixed cost and Q is the total units of output produced. Here we have three columns. First is output, next is TFC and the third is AFC. TFC is fixed at 60 levels of 60 and AFC will be given by 60 by 1, it is 60. 60 by 2 is 30, 60 by 3 is 20. That is TFC by Q. 60 by 4 is 15. 60 by 5 is 12. This is how we find out AFC. Now we come to AFC curve. So this is the AFC curve. Here we measure output on the horizontal axis and average fixed cost on the vertical axis. Now we know that TFC is always constant. And in the table also, it is constant at 60. And we know output is rising. So what happens if the output is rising, that is the denominator is rising and the numerator is fixed, the constant, the ratio, what happens? It is decreasing, right? Because AFC falls as output rises, we know, since numerator of the ratio, the ratio is TFC by Q, that is AFC is given by TFC by Q, now we know the numerator is constant here, but the denominator is rising. So what happens overall? AFC will decrease. So here AFC is decreasing through. Since TFC is never zero, AFC will never touch the x-axis. Suppose if it is touching the x-axis, what happens? Since TFC is never zero, so, so the numerator is never zero. So AFC curve will become zero if it touches the x-axis. But we know AFC will never be zero because TFC is never zero. We know there is always a total fixed cost even if the output level is zero. Now, AFC does not touch y-axis as at zero level of output, TFC is positive. Now, even at this level of output, TFC is positive. So, AFC will not start from here, here, here because else AFC will become Zero because we know even at zero, zero level of output, TFC is positive. So it will not touch x axis and y axis. AFC is a rectangular hyperbola. So the shape of AFC is a rectangular hyperbola. Now we come to average variable cost. Average variable cost is the per unit cost of the variable factors of production. AFC is given by TVC by Q. So TVC is the total variable cost and Q is the total units of output produced. Here we again find out ABC by the same method. TVC by Q, so 40 by 1 is 40. 76 by 2 is 38. 102 by 3 is 34. In this way, we find out ABC. Now we come to ABC curve. Now, ABC curve will at first slope down from left to right. It is sloping down from left to right, reach a minimum, and then it will rise again. So this is what happens with ABC. ABC curve is U-shaped because of the law of variable proportions. Now, what is law of variable proportions? What happens exactly? As quantity of variable input increases, fixed input it is better utilized this is resulting in efficiency, in increase in efficiency of variable factor because we know as quantity of variable input is increasing and the fixed input is 
better utilized they both are working together very nicely so there is an increase in efficiency of variable factor so what happens abc is decreasing that is total cost is decreasing at small levels of output then there is a constant returns to the factor so abc remains constant or abc reaches minimum now what happens as the quantity of variable input goes on increasing that is as more and more of the variable factors are employed variable input becomes too much in relation to fixed input so as the fixed inputs has been fully utilized now fixed inputs they have been fully utilized but there's an the variable factors they are going on increasing so what happens efficiency of variable inputs they decrease which results in an increase in abc so abc curve is positively slope so abc curve first is decreases reaches a minimum and then it increases so this u shaped is because of the shape of law of variable proportions first there is increasing returns which causes abc to fall then there is constant returns followed by diminishing returns which causes cost to rise now we come to average cost so average cost is the per unit cost of both fixed and variable factors of production so ac is given by tc by q where tc is the total cost divided by quantity of output tc can be written as tfc plus tvc because we know total cost is tfc plus tvc now if we split it tfc by q is efc tfc by q plus tvc by q so tfc by q is afc plus abc so ac can also be written as afc plus abc right now here we have the table of afc abc and ac now we have already found afc and abc ac can also be found as afc plus abc that is 60 plus 40 is 100 30 plus 38 is 68 20 plus 34 is 54 or it can also be found by 100 by 1 is 100 136 by 2 that is tc by q is 68 162 by 3 is 54 so on so tc by q can we can do tc by q in order to find out ac or we can also sum up if afc and abc in order to find out ac now we come to ac curve so this is the shape of ac curve so on the horizontal axis we measure output and on the vertical axis we measure cost ac curve is the vertical summation of afc and abc curves so how do we derive ac as i said you ac we get by adding afc and abc so if we add A afc and abc vertically we get ac curve ac is u shaped because of law of variable proportions now ac curve is also u shaped because of the same law law of variable proportions as i have explained you for abc the same logic follows the law of variable proportions so ac curve ac first slopes down from left to right which is a menu and then it increases because of law of variable proportions now if we plot all the three curves together first we know afc curve is a rectangular hyperbola then we plot abc then we on the top it is we have ac which is the vertical summation of abc and afc now we know ac minus abc is afc if we if we subtract ac minus abc we get afc so this part is afc right now distance between ac and abc curve gets smaller as output rises because afc falls as output rises see afc is decreasing as output is decreasing afc is decreasing so this gap which is afc it will decrease because this gap is given by afc so this gap will decrease because as output will rise because this gap is afc and we know at high levels of output afc is falling ac curve never touches abc now this and this two will not touch each other as afc is always positive even if they are the gap is decreasing between ac and abc but 
they will not touch each other because AFC is always positive. And why is AFC always positive? Because TFC is always positive, we know that. Minimum point on AC lies to the right of minimum point on ABC curve. Now, this is the minimum point on AC and this is the minimum point on ABC. So, A is to the right of B. So, minimum point on AC lies to the right of minimum point on ABC curve. This will happen for all. Even in this table, ABC minimum is at four levels of output and AC minimum is at five levels of output. That is at higher level of output. So, suppose this is 30, 33, that is at four levels of output. So, this is at five levels of output, 46. So, minimum point on AC lies to the right of minimum point on ABC curve. It is clear from the table, minimum AC is at five units of output and minimum ABC is at four units of output. So, when you are plotting it, first you will plot AFC curve, then ABC curve. Right? And when you are plotting AC curve, make sure this distance decreases when you are plotting AC curve. And secondly, this minimum point on AC will lie to the right of minimum point of ABC. When you are drawing it, make sure these two or three points, that is the gap will decrease. Now they both will not touch each other, that is AC and ABC. Moreover, the minimum point on AC will lie to the right of minimum point of ABC. So these things have to be taken into account when you are drawing the curve. Thank you for watching my video. This was all about AFC, ABC and AC. I will upload soon more videos. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a great time.